when it comes to having spiritual conversations, a variety of different emotions kind of come into your mind. Fears or anxieties, different sorts of things pop up and you think, oh, I don't know if I could do that. And that's one of the reasons we're not talking about evangelism, because evangelism is a weighted word and it tends to come with a lot more intimidation. Spiritual conversations are things that happen all the time. They're often happening around us and you often figure out that you're in one somewhere in the midst of it. And we want to help you to recognize when you're in those conversations and to know how to bear witness to Jesus when they come up. But the fears and the anxieties we deal with are real and that's why we talked about three of them in the book. So number one, you might feel like you need to be the smartest person in the room when you're talking about Jesus. That the person you're dealing with is going to be a militant atheist who's read thousands of books and done hundreds of hours of research in disproving the things that we believe. That is almost never the case. Uh, number two, you think or feel deep down that maybe this person is going to dislike you if they find out that you believe in Jesus, or if they hear you talking about Jesus, they're going to feel like you're manipulating them in some way. And again, that's almost never the case. Uh, number three, deep down you worry if maybe Jesus hasn't changed your life. And somewhere in the process of talking to this person about Jesus, it's going to become clear to you and to them that Jesus isn't that big a deal and doesn't really matter. And that's something that we definitely need to talk about in the course of our conversation on spiritual conversations. And so I thought I would tell you a spiritual conversation I got into at one point because I think it's a good explanation and sort of a good walkthrough of all of these fears. I was sitting in a coffee shop and reading my Bible, and I was reading it in Greek because I am a nerd. And a guy walked by behind me, and peered over my shoulder and asked if it was a particular kind of Greek. And I turned around and thought, nerd, which is hilarious because I was a huge nerd in that moment. But he was out nerding me on the subject of Greek. And I said, yeah, how do you, how do you know what this is? And it turns out that he's a classics professor at ASU, which means he studies the time of the Bible, the time before the Bible, the time after the Bible. He's read the Bible many times, just as literature. He knows Greek way better than I will ever know Greek. And he studied archaeology to a very real degree. He knows that he does not believe in Jesus, and he is an expert on the subject. And that's intimidating for about half a second until I remember that he's not there to disprove my faith. And so I take a breath, and I say a prayer in my head, and I start asking questions about why he's interested in that stuff. And he starts asking questions about why I'm interested in this stuff. And I find out about his spiritual background. He asks a little bit about my spiritual background. It turns out I actually believe in Jesus, which surprises him. And we talk about our families and about our lives and stuff we got going on that day. And somewhere in the midst of it, he's genuinely curious to know a little bit more about why it is I believe in Jesus. He's not offended. He doesn't feel manipulated. He's not uncomfortable. And in the end, it's clear that what I'm going to have to talk about is why Jesus is such a big deal in my story. Why Jesus has changed my life. What it is about Jesus that I believe is fundamentally important, not just for my life, but for his life and for anyone who comes to know about Jesus. And that really is difficult and really intimidating. But the truth is, I can speak with a great deal of expertise on the subject because nobody knows better than me what Jesus has done in my story.